Oh, so yesterday I made a video breaking down all of the design work that I'd done on battery casings over the last year. And all of that basically coincided with all of the work that I've also done on swappable batteries. They've both had a lot to do with each other and there's been heaps and heaps of work, but they've both been mixed in. Uh, so that's why I've separated the videos, but they're still quite closely related. So now I'll get into all of the history of my work on swappable batteries because it's been huge to me uh, and I'm really excited to go over this. So the goal basically is to allow for people to reliably and safely swap their one wheel battery pack. Now this is only going to be possible for VESC one wheels of course because those are you know open source unlocked and able to be modified. Um, I don't think this will be possible at all with any future motion board, even the old modifiable ones. So, you know, sorry to everyone there. Um, but I doubt anyone who is only writing future motion boards is watching this video anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, the reason why I'm so obsessed with making this possible is because the one wheel frame is incredibly limited in the amount of batteries that it can hold. There's a tiny amount of volume underneath your feet for your batteries, and I think that it makes sense for you to be able to swap your casing in and out so that you can have more power when you want it. It's exactly the same as drones because drones have a need for a light weight and you know a light capacity so that they can fly faster and for longer. Um, so there needs to be a balance there between the amount of battery and the amount of uh, weight that you have um, on it. But of course, all drones have swappable batteries. If you land, you can just plug in a new one and keep flying. But there is not a single one wheel out there that's been able to do that uh, up until, you know, my board over there in the corner. Also, I live next to a main road and it's raining, so this is, you know, probably going to be a bit loud, but I'll try and edit out noise if there is any. All that's really needed for a one wheel swappable battery is a plug, you know. Just plug the battery in and out, that's it, that's easy. But uh, the issue is, is that there is a huge spark every time you plug your battery in. The VEST controllers that we use have big capacitors on them, which basically act as their energy banks for instantaneous power uh, and you know control over the power to the motor. But what's happening is when you unplug your battery, those capacitors drain of energy. And when you plug in your battery again, those instantly fill with energy and then act as a short circuit. That instantaneous short circuit uh, causes damage and stress to the capacitors over time. If you're doing it, uh, it can result in dead capacitors. And it also stresses the contacts of the plug that you're using. When there's that big arc as you plug them in, um, they're going to corrode the contacts of the connector. So in order to get around that, we need to create a pre-charge circuit so we can fill up the capacitors of our VESC before we plug in the main plug and that way we'll get around the arc and we're not going to have any issues at all. So most of my work has all just been around me trying to create a reliable pre-charge circuit and plug for you to use your battery with. So the first area that I tested was using the XT90S. Uh, the XT90S is an anti-spark plug made by AMAS. It's a special plug with a resistor built into the tip of one of its contacts. So as you plug it in, there's a resistor connection which allows the capacitors to charge up slowly and then as you finish plugging in that plug the main connections are made and then there's no resistance anymore. This therefore prevents the spark and allows us to swap the battery without any damage or issues. But the issue with the XT90S is that the resistor is only rated to 5 ohms of resistance and it's also got a wattage rating in the milliwatts. So as we're using it with the high capacitance of our VESCs and also the high voltage and high current of our battery packs, it blows out the resistor after a few uses and then the XT90S is useless. So that plug isn't particularly valuable to uh, our use when it comes to swappable battery packs, but I used it on the first board of mine and you know I was of course disappointed after the first few uses. So the next thing I moved on to was the anti-spark switch. Uh, an anti-spark switch is a, an electrical component, a PCB, commonly used in electric vehicles or electric components that creates a buffer between your battery and your speed controller. It can be used alongside any plug, so I just used an XT60 running down the rail of my board. Uh, and it allowed for the simple plugging in of packs without much thought or issues at all, so it seemed like a great solution. But the problem is, 
anti-spark switches degrade and fail rather quickly, similar to the XT90S, because uh, this time instead they use MOSFETs to buffer the power between your electronic speed controller and your battery, which means basically what you're doing is just transferring the spark issue from your plug to the electrical switches inside the MOSFETs of the anti-spark switch, which means that uh, you'll end up with a dead anti-spark switch because those MOSFETs will degrade over time uh, due to those huge loads from the inrush current. The anti-spark switches also contribute to a huge amount of heating, so uh, my VEST controller was running like a good 10-20 degrees hotter than it was previously when I was using an anti-spark switch. My anti-spark switch in that early board died after about a month of using it and you know it shut down as I was riding down a hill uh, which was awesome and um, ended up stacking it but I was fine that was like the most danger I had throughout all of this experimentation so I'm lucky <laughs> it could have been worse um, so the next thing I started testing after that failed was making my own pre-charge circuit as there was no other option for plugs out there that had appropriate anti-spark systems to my knowledge I started creating pre-charge circuits that you could plug in before you plug in your main connector to allow you to properly charge up the capacitors of the VESC. The first one that I tested was a pre-charge circuit that ran down the rail of you know, the right side of your board with you know, the main power line and it had an XT60 and then a JST2 pin for your pre-charge circuit. As you go to plug your battery in, you would plug the JST in first and then you would plug the XT60 afterwards. Uh, and this worked, but the problem was it was extremely tight to maneuver the cabling around properly around the side of your rail underneath your motor. And finger room was extremely limited to the point where it was really hard to plug or unplug the battery. And it felt super dangerous to do, and it was extremely difficult. Also, at one point, whilst I was using this system, one of the JST plugs actually snapped off, and then the two tiny circuits that it was using Sorry, the two tiny wires that it was using uh, overlapped and then sparked. It was just a big woof of fire. So, you know, it was not great. And uh, that was the issue with that was, of course, uh, how hard it was to maneuver everything just around the side of your rail. So I stopped using that method um, and I started working on the next thing, which was just taking that same pre-charge circuit, but then moving it around to the tail of the board into one of my custom battery packs and allowing you much more maneuverability with those plugs, much more finger room so that you can plug and unplug things properly. And of course, I upgraded those JST plugs so that you'd have a much stronger uh, wire setup and contact. This was great, but the problem was I wasn't super happy with it because it required you to use my fully custom casing. You had no option to use anything else, which I wasn't a fan of. And also the waterproofing was a bit sketchy because the cables were just completely exposed out of the tail. I had waterproof, I had tried to waterproof them with foam, but that wasn't uh, particularly excellent in my eyes. So I started w working towards the next idea, which was uh, using an XT60 with a better build quality, properly mounted into the casing, um, and it was connected to a main line down the rail. That rail connection, which the XT60 would slide into, was attached to the rail by using the bolt that falls through um, and connects the fender to the board, usually. Um, I thought this was a great idea at the time. Of course, it allowed you to just simply drop your battery casing into your board with very little thought. It was super, super easy. And the way that the pre-charge circuit worked on this design was uh, disconnecting the main positive line with a bullet connector just halfway down the rail, which was still pretty achievable. It was still a bit fiddly, but nowhere near as bad as the previous uh, pre-charge circuits that I'd made. So I was pretty happy with it. But it was still not perfect because, again, it still required a fully custom casing from me, which wasn't great in my eyes uh, and also the waterproofing was still a bit of, the, of a concern whilst I'd made it such that the XT60 was completely waterproof into the casing the contacts were still exposed and there wasn't a super easy way for me to deal with that. And also this was the biggest kicker for it the 
receiver XT60 that was bolted to the rail. Uh, there were issues with that because rails are actually slightly different tolerances depending on uh, who they're made by and you know potentially even the batch. I had a set of variables that I was testing it with and also a set of thunder rails and the same plug that would hold it to the rail was actually slightly different depending on the rail type so I just decided that it wouldn't work across the board for all the different rails out there for the XR so I gave up on that design which was annoying because it was the coolest one yet um, but instead uh, I realized because I could make something that could slot so well into a board with just a 3D printer my 3D printing accuracy was excellent and therefore I realized why not just make a fully custom plug? So instead, I started working on the Val Custom Swap Plug, which is a drop-in for any M20 cable gland slot, meaning that this custom connector could work with any one-wheel casing because every single one-wheel casing, Pint, XRGC, all of them use M20 cable glands. So all you need to do is take this 3D printed connector, install it into your battery, and then install the appropriate other side into your controller and then you can connect and disconnect your battery freely. This plug itself has three main contacts. The pre-charge and the ground connect first. That pre-charge connector is connected to the positive through that 100 ohm resistor so that you get a pre-charge going to the VESC. Then after that, the main positive connector, which is the third pin, is recessed into the plug by about an extra millimeter. So as you plug the connector in, it's pre-charging through those first two connections and then the main positive connects about a millimeter afterwards, which transfers to a perfectly appropriate amount of time for you to pre-charge your VESC through the contact. This, so far through my testing, has created a super reliable anti-spark connector with high current capacity. It's performed excellently. I've only been testing it for about the last week in a practical setting. I've been designing it for about the last two months, but it's seriously worked well so far and I still need to create some extra documentation there, finish you know, showing it off to people, um, but I should be able to work out an easy way for me to get these around to people who are after them. So this way you can have a swappable battery pack with any casings that you already have, Pine XRGT, you can reuse any battery pack that you already have, existing stock batteries, CBXRs, CBGTs, whatever, anything that already exists will work with this. Uh, but the only issue is, is the amount of disassembly that you need to you do to actually get your battery casing in and out. Because some one wheel casings have the plug sat at an angle into the rail, you, in some boards, and I'd recommend in most cases, removing the rail from one side of the board so that you can easily connect and disconnect the plug because it is still quite a tight fitment. I've done that so that you can have a good reliable connection, but you won't have easy removing, an easy time removing your battery from the board. Uh, I feel like that's the best way to go. It still only takes three or four minutes for you to swap your battery in and out, but that way you know when you're riding that your connection is secure and the structure of your board is safe. Um, there is a way for, of course, there are heaps of ways as I've tested for you to have a swappable battery whilst making it so that your battery just slaps in and out, but that uh, comes at a risk of potentially reducing the strength of your board and also the, you know, strength of that connection too. So, so far from all of my testing, this is definitely the most reliable way to go and I'm extremely happy with it. Super, super interested in seeing what people think and uh, I hope to be making a bunch more documentation for it over the next week or two. Um, I need to make a video showing off its use in a practical setting. I'll go out and ride with my plug uh, probably this next week and properly show off uh, how it works in a video. So yeah, um, that's basically a breakdown of all of the work and testing that I've done to make a swappable battery work. And hope someone found this super interesting. If you have any questions, then let me know. and. Um, Hopefully you find it useful for your board in the future at some point as well. So yeah, that's that.